Well, time to look at the spells that Nurgle, Zinch and Slanesh all allow their followers to use in 4th edition. Now, all Chaos Wizards also had access to dark magic as well, but they could use these spells. However, it wasn't just the characters who could. No, the lesser demons were also wizards. Now, how it worked was Demonets of Slanesh, Plague Bearers of Nurgle and Horrors of Zinch all gained a wizard level for every 5 models in the unit, the max being 20, being level 4 and knowing 4 spells. Anything after that mm, had no effect. Now, unlike other wizards however, as the unit took casualties, they lost levels and spells, so if the unit went down to 12, would now be a level 2 wizard and no 2 spells. Still, interesting thing they could do back in the day, and let them have a lot more magic options. That's all that's truly unique about them though. On to the spells themselves, and we'll start with Zinch as this is kind of their wheelhouse. The blue fire of Zinch is first up, and for power level 1, 18 inch range, it does d6 strength 4 hits to the first target in a line. The default magic missile. Bolt of Change meanwhile is a power 2 rage trail spell, and it also hits the first model in a line, and it has to take a toughness test on 2d6, and if it fails, they uncontrollably mutate and then die. No saves of any kind allowed against this. Boon of Zinch, simple power level 1 spell, you drew d3 rings of magic cards, and could have then immediately cast another spell. Touch of Zinch is blue fire again, but close combat this time, however it does ignore armor saves now, so nice bonus for it losing its range. Glean magic was power 2 and a 24 inch range, and you nicked a random spell from an enemy wizard, and then could cast it as you wanted. It remained under your control until it was dispelled when it go back to the original owner, or the owner died when it would then be discarded. Incandescent Assassin was power 2 and range 24, and covered the enemy model in flame. The Sorcerer was d6 plus 6, and their target the weapon skill plus d6, and for every point the Sorcerer wins by, they do a wound with a minus 3 save modifier. Pink Fire Zinch is blue fire again, with a 6 inch range, and now ignores armor saves. Zinch really likes this fire spell it seems. Shield of Fire keeps up the fire theme, and it's a power 1 aura that means the sorcerer is only hit in hand hand combat on a 6, and it destroys enemy regiment weapons if they roll a 1 to hit. Quite handy, especially as it remains in play as well. Gift of Chaos is power level 1, and you simply draw a card from the Chaos Gift deck. Hope you don't draw Chaos Spawn, as that would be a double whammy. Finally, Zinch's Firestorm. A power free 24 inch range spell that has you put down its template anywhere in range and everything underneath takes a strength 5 hit with no armor saves allowed bar magic ones. Anything it kills creates a pink horror that pops out of the realm of chaos and a new unit is created 3 inches away from where the template is. Yeah, Zinch overall liked repeating the blue fire spell a lot, but Glean Magic, Assassin, and Firestorm could also really hurt. Now, next up, we have Slanesh. The lore I am most familiar with, as even back in the day, I might have allied my undead with chaos just to gain access to this lore. Acquiescence is first up, and it's a power level 1 spell that remains in play and targets an enemy model in base contact. They had to pass an initial test, and if they failed, were now stupid and their stats were halved, rounding up until it was dispelled. Yeah, it had some potential. Still, if you wanted to do it outside of combat, you then had the Beam of Slanesh which was power 2 and a 24 inch range. This time the target had to pass a leadership test on 3d6 instead, but if they failed, the same thing happened, stupidity and the stats are halved, it also remains in play. Next up, and you can tell these are old rules of a name like this, Bondage of Slanesh, where for 2 power and a 12 inch range, the target unit or model could not do anything while the spell remains in play as they are bound of magical threads and ropes. Yep, don't see that one returning anytime soon. Oh, but it's very on brand for Sanesh. Cacophonic Crier is power 1 and has a d6 inch range, and all enemies within that range take a strength 5 hit with no saves allowed bar magic ones. Definitely a cast while in combat spell, as potentially get the entire enemy unit with it. Now, don't you think your opponent should also enjoy the wonder that is watching a character become a Chaos Spawn? Well, for 3 power and 24 inch range, you can make a model take a toughness test on 2d6, and if they fail, poof, instant chaos spawn. 
yeah, this was definitely one of the spells you wanted and kind of why I always try to take Slanesh um, Sorcerers in my Undead Army as, ooh, this had the potential. Now, they also have a Cursed Caress. This was power 2, and you chose a model in base contact. You rolled a d6, and if it went over their total remaining runes, you gave them a loving caress. And then they dropped dead when no saves allowed. Lash of Slanesh is power 1 and an 8 inch range, and does 2d6 strength 4 hits to an enemy, and yeah, this is their sort of default magic missile. Pervain of Slanesh is power 2 and a 24 inch range, and the target had to take a leadership test, if they failed, now we're constantly dancing and could not move, shoot or fight in close combat, and it remains in play. Says a lot that the first image that came to my head was a bunch of black orcs with a dancing. Slicing shards in this is the other standard magic missile, being power 2, 24 inch range, and does 2d6 strength 4 hits. The final slanish spell is the Sucker of Chaos. Power 1, 12 inch range, and this is a buff that targeted a unit, and everything in it got plus 1 to hit in close combat. Always handy. Yeah, so this was definitely the more about giving debuffs and disruption, but could kill things if required, and do it quite well. And yeah, this is definitely where my interest in Nish was, though it was only for the source, whereas I didn't touch the army itself because... Well, I'll talk about that in the demon section. Anyway, on to the final magic casting god, Papa Nurgle! And what did he do compared to the others? Well, first up, Cloud of Flies was a power level 1 spell with a 20 inch range. It's a debuff that prevented an enemy from a unit from moving or shooting. It also meant they couldn't get shot at in return though as the flies got in the way both ways. It remained in play. Sticking with the fly theme, Fly Swarm is next and this is a power level 1 spell and it ignores the first wound on the sorcerer and if it would be an instant decimal effect it is stopped on a 4 plus. The flies then leave but they do remain in play till the effect goes off which is handy. My Asma Pestilence was a power level 2 spell that meant all non-Chaos Champions, Sorcerers and Deeds of Nurgle had their stats half or within 6 inches of the character. It also remains in play. Starting notes a theme here, Nurgle. Pillar of Putrefaction is power level 1, and now the Sorcerer's in the air on this pillar made of, well let's just say Nurgle stuff. While on this pillar they could only be hit by ranged attacks and models of the fly rule, they also had a 2 plus save. They also auto spelled any spells cast at them. It also remains in play. Now how about a good old pit of slime? Power 2, range 12 spell, and you chose a model in range and it had to pass a strength test, and if it failed, it got stuck in it and can't do anything. They can attempt to escape the next magic phase, but if they fail again, the um, pit swallows them whole and they die. Plague Wind is a power 3 spell, 24 inch range, that did 3d6 hits minus the target's toughness on a unit. Each hit wounded to the 4+, plus, no armor saves allowed, and for every 3 wounds dealt, a plague bear was spawned within 3 inches of a new unit. Next, Rancid Visitation, and it's the magic missile. Power 2, Rage 18, 2d6 strength 4 hits, no armor saves allowed, but magic ones were. Oh dear, looks like you've come down with a case of shriveling pox. A power level 1 spell will cast in close combat, and the caster walls 2d6 and the opponent 1d6, and for each point the caster wins, the opponent takes a wound of no armor saves allowed, bar magic ones. Stench of Nurgle is power 1, and you debuffed an enemy model in close combat, and all non-Nurgle models in base combat of them had minus 1 attack while this remains in play. The final spell was Stream of Corruption, a power 2 pref attack, and all models touched must pass an initiative test or die with no armor saves allowed, bar magic ones as usual. The exception was if a model was toughness 7 or higher, they just took d6 wounds instead. Yeah, Nurgle was the remain in play god, and they could all stack together to be a right pain, but some decent offense as well. So yeah, that was the magic the gods provided. Sanesh, as I said, is definitely my favorite, but Nurgle's each had some good stuff too. Still, next time we move on to the army and the Chaos Warriors, and, oh, Icorn. Yes, don't worry, we'll get to talk about some of your stuff next time too.